What's up everybody? I'm the Speakeasy Brewer. Welcome. Today is a busy day and so is tomorrow. So if you guys are free tomorrow or have time, um, make sure to tune in tomorrow as well. So just so that you know what we're doing today. I'm sorry. This is amateur stuff, obviously. Um, today we're kegging a beer and uh, we're also creating our yeast starter for tomorrow's brew. Um, so I've got all my stuff ready to go for the yeast starter, but first we're going to do the beer, um, the kegging. So this is my very first kegging experience, and you guys get to join me along in the adventure. Uh, one of my reasons for doing this Twitch channel was one, I know enough to kind of get people who don't know anything about beer or coffee or any of that stuff to, um, one, hopefully I'm going to inspire you guys to maybe start roasting your own coffee or brewing your own beer, but uh, I also figured it's worth it to bring people along with my experience and ex uh, experimentation uh, because, you know, along the way, uh, things happen, right? Uh, a lot of the time, things go really, really well, but sometimes bad things happen, um, and I mean, not super bad, but I mean, you might waste a beer. Uh, I've already had two beers fail on me. One was the very first beer that I uh, tried experimenting with, and honestly, it was horrible. Uh, but I did get some good use out of it one what summer. I can't remember if it was last summer or the summer before. We used it to uh, kill slugs. The slugs loved it. Uh, and I still have a whole bunch of bottles because I feel guilty for pouring it out, but honestly, I should reclaim my bottles and just pour it all out because there's no reason for me to drink it because it's not that great. And then I also had another batch of beer that was, uh, it went bad because I didn't clean well enough and it just got this gnarly bacteria and it was, it was really cool looking, but it made the beer smell like burnt band-aids. Uh, and if you're curious to whether I tried it, I did. Honestly, I, uh, did a lot of research on forums and saying, is my beer bad? Is my beer bad? And some people were like, well, you might as well just taste test it and see because sometimes the bacteria or wild yeast or something that gets in your beer can actually be a happy accident. Most times than not, it's, you know, a bad thing. You just have to throw your beer away. And if you're using plastic equipment, you have to throw all that equipment away as well. So, um, major bummer. So that was, a. Uh, I think it was just like a $40 beer that I put together and I mean I'm brewing about five gallons per batch or per brew and uh, when I do that uh, makes about 48 to 50 bottles 12 ounce bottles uh, today we're kegging it which is exciting so it'll be about five gallons of kegged beer uh, I did the math on that and I want to say it was about 40 pints of beer so that's pretty good um, we're going to put the beer in the keg today. We're gonna to force carbonate it and just make sure all the lines are sanitized. The biggest thing, most important thing in terms of brewing beer is sanitation. Sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Those are the first three rules of brewing beer. Then the la uh, rule number four is good water. Rule number five is good ingredients. And rule number six is have fun. And seven is experiment. So that's what we're doing today. Um, I'll show you everything. I got it all filled up and ready to go, so you don't have to sit and watch all of that. But let me show you what I've got going on right now. Um, I told you about cleanliness. Cleanliness is the most important thing for any uh, brewing uh, that you do. Um, and basically, anything that's going to touch beer, you need to, to sanitize. So uh, for my sanitation, I always use this. It's called Star San. Uh, this is like the go-to thing uh, go-to sanitation um, it's an acid it's a really really strong acid uh, there's a lot of things on here that say don't get it on your counter or put it on cutting boards because it can get on your food it can ruin your food so don't do that so if you're going to be doing using this uh, do make sure to rinse often um, try not to have long exposure for skin contact just read the rules and instructions but this stuff is amazing stuff it does wonders and right now I've got um, my parts and pieces for the keg uh, soaking in the star sand as we um, speak so that'll just speed up the process so star sand is my what I use for sanitation and then when you're dealing with cleaning bottles or uh, for example when I clean out my keg 
Um, it's good to get the gunk off, the yeast off with a, a cleaner. So cleaning and sanitizing are two different things. Um, some, if you're in the restaurant business, sanitation means that you're putting dishes in a dishwasher after they've been cleaned and cleaning is just getting the gunk off and then the sanitation is very hot water and chemicals, right? So my cleaner that I use, this stuff is amazing. You can use it in your dishwasher, you can use it in your sink, in anything really, your shower, um, and it's called PBW. This is the stuff that I use. There's other cleaners that are out there. Uh, this is just one that has been recommended to me and that's the only one I've used so far and it works wonders. Um, so that's what I use most of the time to get any of the gunk off and then we sanitize afterwards with star sand. So I did the PBW in the keg yesterday, uh, again to speed up the process because I didn't want to bore you guys. Also there's just a lot going on today for preparation for tomorrow so um, I just didn't want to waste time. So uh, we're clean. We're, uh, Using star sand in my keg right now. Let me show you my keg. Let me get this all ready to go. Um, and sorry, I'm just gonna grab you real fast. All right, sorry about my kitchen. It's a mess. Uh, my wife's gonna come in here. She's making some sourdough bread, so it's gonna be a mixed space today. But here's here's my keg. Right here. This is a five gallon, uh, basically pony keg. So it's gonna have five gallons of beer in it. Um, you could see the top is in the star sand solution right now, and it is getting sanitized um, while we are um, talking right now. And then on this side, this is where the gas is gonna go in. That's the CO2, that's the gas I'm talking about. And then out this side is gonna be beer. So what we're gonna do today, um, this is what was, again, this is my first time doing this, so you're gonna have to bear with me. And I figure I'd bring you guys along the journey in case any mistakes happen so you can learn from it, learn from my mistakes, because we all know that we don't have enough life in our lives. That doesn't make any sense, but um, we don't want to make all the mistakes ourselves, so might as well learn from other people's mistakes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this all together, this keg, and then we're going to force carbonate it and use the CO2 pressure to um, put all of this star sand um, in this bucket and we're going to use that again for tomorrow's brew day um, We'll also be using it again tonight when we do the star sand uh, not star sand the yeast starter So we're trying to be efficient and uh, Sustainable to the best of our ability um, So that's what we're going to do today um, on the table is my IPA um, I don't know if I can drag you there with me. Well, let's try what let's try uh, Last stream um i believe some goner was the one who was um chatting with me and he was helping me to improve my streaming experience for you all um and i'm sure part of it would be to just have a camera that's easy to set up somewhere so i don't have to drag you around and make you all uh motion sick but anyways so here is the great unveiling of the beer here we are i know it looks gross um, I'll explain everything that you see here. Uh, one thing that I am kind of bummed about is it's a little hazy. And for those of you who like hazy IPAs, maybe you're happy about this. I think what I forgot was um, normally I put this tablet in the brew, uh, in the boil near the end. It's called a Werflock tablet. It's a mix of gypsum and, and um, what else is there? Irish moss, and basically it helps to gelatinize and collect all the proteins that are floating around yeast and all that other stuff and it kind of clarifies things and makes it nice and bright and clear so um, honestly I think it probably got uh, a little hazy because either I forgot that or uh, the temperature started rising and it sometimes when the temperature is higher the yeast has a tendency to um, kind of move about in the beer not a bad thing yeast once we cool this beer down it should fall out and get sink to the bottom if you swallow a little bit of yeast in your beer, it's not bad. In fact, it's actually good for your gut flora, in case you didn't know. Um, but like I said, it does look a little gross. So during the fermentation, um, there is this, it's basically the byproduct of the yeast eating the sugars in the beer, which I'll kind of explain the whole process um, tomorrow. But um, basically, this is all of their poop 
Again, it's not dirty like ours. Um, basically, there's just like this giant foam layer on top. And as that foam recedes and dries, it kind of collects on the top. And this is also um, hop particulate, grain particulate, as well as some dead yeast cells. So it looks gross, I know, but the beer is safe to drink and it's delicious. If you really want to see what's gross, look at the stuff at the bottom. So that's all the stuff that was at the top and it sank to the bottom. So that's what that is today. Um, so that's what we're dealing with. Um... Um, also, you'll notice that there's still some bubbles on top. Um, that's just the yeast still eating some sugars. Um, if you're bottling, you want to like make sure that um, it's done fermenting. Otherwise, you're going to have just a bunch of explosives that will uh, shoot shards of glass everywhere and you'll waste all your beer. Um, my guess is that there's still a little bit of sugar in there and the yeast is still working on it, but it's been sitting for about a month, so I'm pretty sure it's done. Um, another way, this is what you sh are supposed to do. And, uh, the other way of figuring it out is just measuring your, um, finishing gravity. And if it's right around the finishing gravity that you want for your beer, then you're good to go. So it's been sitting for a few months. It's an ale yeast. It's done. There's probably a little bit of fermentation going on, but when we're dealing with the keg, we don't have to worry about, um, the explosiveness of beer bottles. Um, because we're not feeding the yeast any more sugar. When you're bottling, you're feeding it corn sugar. Gives the yeast more food. They go through the whole uh, fermentation process again, eating all that sugar. Adds a little bit of alcohol. Honestly, it's not even enough to even count it as a percentage, but it also creates CO2. And at the top of the bottle, you'll notice if you just go get a beer bottle that's not been opened, there's about an inch at the top of space. So all that CO2 goes to the top and it creates... Uh, lots of pressure and then as it that pressure is increased with more co2 it starts to dissolve into the beer and that's what gives you the carbonation most of the time breweries will actually like force carbonate their beer and then they'll stick it in the bottle so now you know some stuff so let's get this thing going oh yeah um maybe i should show you all my other stuff so today this is our co2 canister it's a five gallon canister i think Anyways, uh, brand new, and then we've got our lines. So the clear one is for beer, the red one is for gas, and here is our gas regulator. Um, really, really excited to give this a shot today. Um, the regulator that I'm using and all the equipment is from uh, this brand, Comos. Again, they're not. I'm not being um, sponsored or anything because I'm not that cool yet. Uh, maybe one day. Um, It'll be cool. But anyways, so let's get this thing going, shall we? So the star sand's been good. I got to turn the dipstick around one more time just to make sure that the top part of the dipstick for where the beer is going to be coming out has a chance to um, has a chance to sit in the star sand. You'll notice also when I go through this whole process at the base of the keg, I'll make sure to show you there's going to be a little bit of foam left over from um, the star sand. That is okay. The star sand, again, it's just a really strong acid. I think it's, uh, what is it, a 5 on the pH scale, maybe a 4 even. So it's just a really strong acid. It's killing all the bacteria, wild yeast, all that other stuff that could potentially ruin the beer. But you'll see a little bit of foam at the bottom, and the foam is good. So if you're doing your own kegging, and you're doing your own bottling, and you do you're brewing your own beer, just know that if you have a little bit of foam left over from the star sand, that's okay, that's good. Um, and the amount of star sand that's in there with those bubbles and everything is so minimal, it's not gonna affect you in any way physical. So there's that, so a good to know, right? And I got two viewers, woo! All right, exciting. So um, I think based off of the, some goner, he, some goner was the, guy that helped me fix my stream. He helped me to fix uh, everything in terms of chat so it doesn't stay forever and it's a smaller space. So if you guys see anything that you think I can improve on, which I know there's a lot, I can take the feedback and critique, feel free to say something um, to me because I want to learn if you know how to fix it. Um, otherwise, feel free to say hi because this is just the fun part of doing this stream for me is um, having people uh, 
uh, interact with what's going on. So anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get this thing set up. I've got two um, pieces. Okay, this is the red again. That's where the gas is going to connect to and the green is where the beer is going to come out of. So I'm going to go ahead and screw in the red, uh, the red hit stick and uh, on the keg it says in. We speak English, it says in, that's the gas because the gas goes in. It's going to go in, it's going to pressurize things and then um, we've got this dipstick, I'll pull it out just so you can see how long this thing is. This goes to the bottom of the keg, which this side hasn't been star sand yet, so, um, so I'm going to let that sit in there for a second. That's going to attach to this, and it's going to go into the outside. It doesn't have the word out, but that's the only other side that's available, so that's where the beer is going to come out of. The good old, good old beer. I love beer. It's so good. Um, so while I let that sit, I'm going to be right back. I have to grab one more hose. Uh, that hose is going to um, connect. I have to connect everything. Uh, but the hose that I'm going to grab is for the beer going into the keg. So bear with me for a short moment. I will be right back. So just a few tools on uh, you, if you're thinking about getting into beer, uh, these are some tools you will end up needing. So I've got some silicone uh, tubing here that is used for transferring the beer from the fermenter to the keg. And then I've got this contraption right here. It is called a racking cane. It's basically a siphon that's going to um, go inside the beer. We connect it to this hose. And that's how we get the beer out of the fermenter into the keg. Um, the other one, which if you weren't, my wife is joining. She's doing, she's the beautiful one. We're doing sourdough. She's making the sourdough. Uh, the other thing, which you'll see me use again tomorrow, is a hydrometer. This hydrometer is going to tell us what potential sugars we have in the beer. And it's going to also tell us the potential alcohol content of the beer as well. This is what I'm going to be using to make sure that I have the, um, the correct final gravity for the beer to make sure it's done fermenting, um, which I already know it's done fermenting because it's been sitting for a month and a week. So it's done, but uh, it'll at least give me a good idea of how much is left in terms of the gravity, which means that there's a few sugars that aren't going to be used, but that's fine. It'll keep the beer nice and sweet. Anyway, so that's what we're looking at. I'm going to put these in this container because anything that touches a beer now that the beer is room temperature needs to be sanitized um, because the bacteria and the yeast will live in cooler conditions, room temperature, that kind of thing. So really make sure that everything is sanitized. Um, tomorrow when I'm doing the brew day, when I'm putting the, the wort chiller in the beer and a few other things, you're going to see that I'm not sanitizing it or deal, doing anything like that before I stick it in the beer. That's because it's about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's going to sterilize everything. So just so you know what's going on, and you're not like, hey, he said sanitize everything, and he's not sanitizing those things. Why is that? Well, that's what's going on, okay? So we're going to get that going. Um... All right, dipstick, you need some tools. I believe this is a 7 sixteenths, 7 eighths. It's a 7 eighths wrench. Uh, I'm borrowing that from a neighbor um, today, so 
Um, there's that. So let's see if I can show you guys what's going on. Sorry, sorry. Shoot, I can't do this with one hand. Okay, actually, let's bring this down a little closer. All right, I don't know if you can see this, but here's our dipstick. I'll let it sit in the sanitizer. A good rule of thumb is that you want uh, this stuff to get in contact with star sand for a minimum of two and a half minutes, which these things have. Um, but we're going to tighten these, and you don't want them to be super tight, just tight enough, really. Um, I'm gonna give it one go with this. Oops. And I'm just, I'm just turning it until it feels tight. Um, we'll test everything once um, it's all together because we're gonna be looking for air leaks and that sort of thing. So um, there's that. Now we're putting the top in. So exciting. I'm really excited to actually like get this going. It's been something that's been a long time coming. Ouch. Oh, okay. So we're looking for an airtight seal, which it looks like we've got so far. All right. Next, we're going to connect some stuff. All right. So we're going to bring our CO2 can canister over and the regulator first. See, anybody who would show you guys this um, will know everything to do already. They'll be like, oh yeah, I'm a master brewer. Here's how you do it. And here I am just like being a dingus and <laughs> messing things up, but it's okay. So I just got to get this silly cap off and then we're going to roll this, we're going to connect the CO2 canister to the regulator. And everything that I've seen, again, my first time, everything that I've seen is just finger tight, should be good, and then if it's not, then um, you can tighten things up. But here we go. So I've never done this before, so we're gonna just see how this how this works out. Okay, that's on. Okay, so that's good. Next, here is the beer tap, or the beer line, I guess I should say. So we're gonna connect this to the keg, which um uh, hold that thought. Here's the outlet for putting on the keg. So this is the ball lock for the beer side of the keg. And I'm just gonna tighten it up. Again, finger tight should be okay. Uh, you don't wanna force things too much because if you do, there's a chance that you can damage it or mess up the threading. So we're gonna just stick this on. There we go. Sweet. Oh man, I'm so excited. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, I'm only doing this because this is what somebody told me to do. Uh, this is what he always does when he does his kegging, so I trust him because he's got way more experience than I do, so it's always good to find people or forums that talk about all the things that uh, you need to learn because, well, you don't wanna figure it out all on your own. So we're gonna turn on the CO2. We're gonna pressurize the keg with the star sand in it. We're gonna run the star sand through this beer tap and we're gonna capture it in this bucket, which we'll use that tomorrow. So um, that's what we're doing today. We're gonna to go through the whole container of... Oh, oh shit. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Uh oh. That to me. The hose is not tight. Yeah. There you go. I can tell. What do you mean? There we go. There you go. Okay, so that released the pressure. Yep. Holy cow, that was cancer. a mess. I did not expect that to happen. So, 
Uh, accidents do happen. That's the greatest thing about being live. Wow, that's a lot. There's a timer here. That's a lot. That's what Star is Santa. that? That's Star that's Santa. That's Star Santa. I think it's... Uh, it wasn't them. Well, yeah, sure. Okay. Sees your little gasket around the head half the time, right? I guess so. <laughs> Is that's um, that's open, right? Yeah, it says less pressure. Okay, so that is coming out of there. Let's try this again. Let's see. So this is exactly why we do this, right? Yep. Let me be the one to make the mistake so you don't have to. <laughs> so you're tightening something? Yeah, I'm tightening, tightening the CO2. Oh. If, I, if this is the right size, it's not. <laughs> Can't go bigger, huh? You need the one from the garage? Yeah. I'll go get it. I'll be right back. Okay. Entertainment. Okay. I'm in the spotlight now. Um, I'm making sourdough bread. So we're both doing our fermentation. And I over it's in the oven right now. You can take a look. Ta-da. It looks so beautiful. It's a very hot oven. It's going to make it really nice and warm here in the kitchen on the summer day. But we'll have bread sourdough bread at that and those things those loaves go for ten dollars each at this local market so I enjoy making it I don't know what else Austin has going on you can take a look at the beer Ta-da! the camera's opposite it's so hard to read stand by it's coming back Hopefully she wasn't saying too much embarrassing stuff. No. Just a little bit. Uh-huh. Oh, you're just talking about sourdough bread. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do? Oh, you're just trying to yeah. tighten this. Camera's so wiggly. I love our tools. Tighten metal, or sorry, hand tighten plastic stuff, but tighten metal a little bit more, huh? Yeah. So this and then the other was thing. shooting water out. I so know. Figuring things out. Okay. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, so that that's sounds better open. already. I don't hear anything. You don't hear any fizz. Yeah, I'm fixed. I think. And there's moving through the pink pipe. Oh, good. Sweet. I can feel it. So we need it to be at 10 psi, which really is not that much. Okay, you want to move the camera real fast? Yeah. All right, so let's see. Moment of truth. Oh, look at that. Cool. You had this released, remember? Do you need to make it tight again? Oh, no, it's fine. Okay. So, this is working great. Coda approves. Coda approves. Get everything soaked up in the star sand. It's really hot, because I made it really hot. It's, <laughs> it's so hot right now. It's so hot. It's hot in here, and it's hot. All, All right, so you guys got a chance to see... Um, failure. A failure. 
But this is that's the greatest thing about experimenting and trying things new. Honestly, today when I was thinking about doing this live stream, I was like, I was kind of nervous because I had no idea what I was doing, and I was really just, I was just worried that it wasn't going to go well. Um, but I know, like I always say, it's good to be experimental. Um, and when you're experimenting, there's always a potential for failure, and that's okay. It's okay to have failure. Uh, as long as you have failure and you get up and you learn from it and try again until you figure out a process that works for you, it's not a big deal. Um, if you let failure sneak into your life to the point where you give up, then that's called defeat. And once you have defeat, then that's it, you're done. Uh, failure, I like to redefine as a, um, a minor setback. Sometimes they can be more than just minor though. Sometimes the failures that you experience in life can be a much greater setback than you would hope. But uh, the trick is to just constantly be moving forward. And um, yeah, that's the trick. That's what we wanna try and do with everything that we, we do in life. So just never give up, never give up. There's that philosophical thing for the day. Um, trying to find out I hear air I can't quite tell if it's uh bubbling out from anywhere or not doesn't look like it I think it has a little fluid in there. I think that's what I'm hearing is bubbling. Hmm. Yeah, because there's bubbles right here. Hmm. So like I said, I'm going to just fill this up with all of the CO2. We're in, right now at about three gallons. So, so you pre you're pushing out the Sethar sand with the CO2? I am, yeah. Oh, so the reason I'm doing cool. this is, one, to clean this line. And two, the other reason why this guy told me to do it the way I'm doing it now is because um, what we're doing is uh, filling the tank with CO2, which means that oxygen can't get in there. And um, we don't want, because it'll oxygenate the beer and it'll make it go bad faster. Okay. Um, and CO2 is heavier than oxygen, so it'll fill the um, keg and then we'll put the beer in over top of it. Let's see. How much, okay, so that CO2 is just gonna expand into the size of the keg, right? Yep, okay, there's air coming in right there. I need to get this right here. Do you have more star sand than, do you need another bucket? Uh, I'm just gonna put the rest of it down the sink. So for those of you who are watching or who do watch later, who do do do, uh, you'll get a chance to see the uh, mistake that just happened, which is all good. We learn from our mistakes, so that's good. So that's all I'm gonna stick in there. And then I'm gonna stick the rest down the sink just because I don't have a space to put it and I don't need all of this stuff. So confused by this backwards camera action. Oh yeah. Sorry if it's jittery, that's, that's me trying to understand. <laughs> That's my my <laughs> wife, who's the camera lady right now. Flipping the view. Yeah. So I know one of the things that I've said before is I don't like to waste anything. So that's why we captured most of the star sand, but there's just extra star sand that's in here that we don't need anymore. Um, so it's totally fine uh, for what we're doing. So there's that. We're gonna get all the star sand out, and then we're putting the beer in. And then uh, I always like to take a little bit of a sip from the beer, even though it's not carbonated. I like to call that the angel share. Um, and hey, I guess you're done. We must be done. I'm just gonna let it run for a little bit. I'll breathe. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm gonna turn this off so I don't waste any more. Close. 
Okay, so that's tightened. This is not tightened. That could be tighter anyways. Okay, so now this is clean. So I'm gonna stick that in there for now. And then we're going to, I guess I could get a little bit of CO2 out of it. Why'd you do that? So I did that because otherwise the top went open. <laughs> Wasn't that full of CO2 right now? It was, but there's still CO2 in the bottom. Oh, because it sunk? Yeah. It's heavier, so it heavier just because... Than just air? So it's not pressurized CO2 anymore. Okay. See, you, you can't even see anything in there. Okay. Well, hopefully it's still in there. It is. It's all in there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is... Can you get CO2 poisoning? Um, probably, probably. All right, here we go. Um, I'm going to move this over here. And I'm going to move this over here too. Oops. The lid fell in the bucket. So this is an important part of the process as well. Basically what we're doing here is um, we don't want the, um, gosh, I can't even think what I'm trying to say right now. We don't want the beer to get oxygenated. So it's really important that we don't create a lot of um, air in between the process. So I've got a nice long tube that should go straight from the fermenter to the keg. Um, and to minimize it, I'm also going to um, run the beer down the side of the keg, and that's going to just have less splashing in, in the long run. So let me get everything set up here. There's the, ah, that's hot. Beer is so creepy, just kidding, it's so ugly. 72 degrees. What did you ferment this beer at, Austin? What, what, what temperature? Uh, between, I think it was 72 most most of the time. And what kind of beer is it again? It's an IPA. Oh, yeah. You're Amber's later. Yep. Amber's Amber tomorrow. next. Exciting. What did you put in your IPA? You probably already did a video on that. I already did a video on it. <laughs> but it didn't save on Twitch because I'm so new to everything. Oh, bummer. Yeah. This is the one with uh, hops from your mom and dad's vineyard. That's true. Yeah, they have, have some hops at their vineyard. They have hops at their vineyard. So, so we don't need this airlock anymore. Oh yeah, I told you I was gonna do the um, hydrometer reading. So I should probably do that. Oh no. Sometimes it gets uh, stuck because of the sugars. Yeah. I guess I'm looking at the computer now. I know, you gotta look at me. It actually kind of smells like a. Hefeweizen. One, oops, sorry. 1.012. Yeah. And I know there's lots of foam. Remember, the foam is good. mess so when you do this kind of, when you do anything beer just be ready for a big big mess <laughs> okay so you're putting the tube down the hole there yep so you get your siphon in yep siphon right in the middle let's see how far down does it go 
you do me a favor? Can you yeah. just stick the camera down right here? Yep. All right. And then can you get me that, um, let's see, the cooler maybe? So here we go, perfect. I might have to lower it here once we get it a little bit fuller, but basically I just want it to be a little bit lower than the fermenter. As it fills up, I'm gonna lower it to the ground. I'm looking over here, not the, I have to look here, not the computer. Um, and then once it gets full enough, I'll move it to the ground, that way there's less oxygen. So we're just gonna give it a couple pumps, sometimes just one, and there we go. So now um, the beer is coming through the line, down into the keg. And this is great because um, it goes pretty quick. Already we've got probably a little, half an inch. Half an inch. So that's about um, a little less than half a gallon. So it goes pretty quick. Um, so this is the fast part. And then I don't have to bottle because normally what I do is I move it into a bottling pail. I have to heat up corn sugar water, let that cool down so it doesn't kill the yeast. And then I add, um, I put it in a bottling pail and then I add the beer. I have to mix up the sugar and the beer. And that way some bottles aren't overly um, carbonated while others aren't. Um, so that's kind of a finicky thing. And then, uh, then I have to cap them. So I have to fill the bottles, cap the bottles. It just takes so much longer. So this has reduced my workload already down to about, um, I don't know, how long have we been doing this? This is an hour? Has it really been an hour already? Shoot, I guess it's been an hour. Um, but this is my first time, so uh, part of it's explaining the process and the other part of it's actually doing it and figuring it out while I do it. <laughs> so that's what's going on. But here we are, we've already got one gallon done. Um, I'm noticing that it's it, there's a lot of haze in here. Um, normally my beers are really clear, so my thinking is that the yeast is just, it's gotten too warm and the yeast is up and, and moving around, so um, I'm going to cold crash this. So once I'm done moving this beer into the keg, I'm going to get it all set up and I'm going to stick it out in my refrigerator that I've got in my garage, which if you watched any of my videos, coffee or brewing, uh, you'll see the uh, refrigerator in the back. So that's where it's going to be. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's what's going on. So let's move you back. Sorry. Uh, oh, being an amateur, it's so much fun. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just slowly moving things in. about two gallons in or a gallon and a half in um, which is good here I'm gonna just do this cuz I keep looking at the computer there we go look at my beautiful face hey Amy can you do me a favor yep. can you move this clamp in the back of the camera so that it fits gosh this is the most amateur m moment do I just push it down yeah here once you I'll lift like that? Yeah. there's a hinge on the back Oh, <laughs> there we go. Okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> We're figuring it out together. I don't know how to use that thing. All right, I'm going to lift this up, and I'm going to have you move the cooler now. Move. Using gravity. Yep. It's not there. I need to get a longer one, but now it's in the two or in the beer, so we're not getting much oxygen in there. A little bit's okay, but not a lot. It's funny when we when we get the beer finished, which again tomorrow, if you're watching, you'll get a chance to see. Um, when we pour it in the fermenter, it creates a huge amount of oxygen. Now, in addition to sugar, 
the yeast also needs a little bit of uh, oxygen in order to survive, and um, and that's what they need to create alcohol. Funny, funny note. I'll probably say this again because I have a short term memory sometimes. Um, but early on, back in the medieval days, uh, when the monks were brewing beer, you can thank the good old early Christian church for beer, um, at least in the Western um, Western civilization, um, because they were the ones that were brewing beer. Um, at the churches um, and the monasteries and everything like that. And there's still a few monasteries that brew beer, um, like Trappist beer, which I hope to try one of these days. But Trappist beer is um, only brewed. There's only six Trappist monasteries that actually brew beer still. Back in the day, the Trappist monks brewed beer to help uh, raise funds and keep them going as uh, ministry financially back in the day. Also, the monasteries brewed a lot of beer because uh, beer actually was life back in medieval days because you had all sorts of waterborne diseases and they didn't have water purification out. Um, so what they would do is they'd brew beer and it was really, really low point alcohol beer. And that low point alcohol beer uh, killed all the diseases that could have, waterborne diseases that could have killed people like cholera. And uh, that's what they, used to stay alive so um, interesting history so yeah we're getting close we got about uh, two gallons left I would say so we've gone about three gallons um, and then we'll stick it all in we'll increase the carbonation amount and then uh, we're gonna taste the beer we're gonna try it I know we got a, a storm moving through <laughs> so it got it got really dark anyways um, for the one person who's viewing I don't know if it's somebody I know or not um, thanks for sticking around I'm sorry if it's a little boring right now um, honestly I don't have a whole lot to talk about and I'm having a hard time thinking of things to talk about because uh, it's so new for me uh, we're getting really close oh my goodness it looks so good I'm really excited to try it. This is one of those moments that when you do all this work, you're like, oh boy, it's done. And then you try the beer and you're like, oh my goodness, that is the worst beer I've ever had in my entire life. Crap. Because then you have to dump it all and clean it. So yeah, my favorite part about brewing is cleaning. I love cleaning. I love doing all the cleaning. It's so great. I just love cleaning. Cleaning is a pain in the butt. It's a pain. So that's my least favorite thing. So normally on brew day, uh, I like to enjoy a beer or two or three um, near the ha back half of the brew day because that makes cleaning way more fun. Um, or at least you don't think about the cleaning. <laughs> so that's pretty fun and neat and such. I'm really excited to try this though. Like I'm really, really excited to try this. Yeah, this is going to be a game changer, though, because I'm trying to save up money for an actual kegerator right now. Um, I was looking at a three-tap kegerator so I can get three five-gallon pony kegs in the uh, kegerator so I can have a three-tap tower, which would be so sick. Uh, then I can have three of my beers on tap at all times, um, which is, that's so exciting to me. Then I can have my own bar in my own garage. It's going to be sweet. Righteous. Okay, we're almost done. The keg is getting full. The beer is starting to run out in terms of the fermenter. Whoops, whoopsie daisy. That helicopter sounds really dang close. Uh, sounds like it's landing in the street. There's been multiple helicopters here in the wild. Sometimes more than one at a time. And they've been so loud lately. That one's down low, though. It's landing in the park. Maybe we're getting invaded. <laughs> Anyways, I'm running out of things to say. I'm sorry. Uh, once we get to the second half of this uh, live stream, I will have more to say because I, I know that really well. I know that 
um, much better than this. That's close enough. There's always a little bit of waste, and I try to do whatever I possibly can to create as little waste as possible. Um, but the truth of the matter is, it's just not, it's not possible to have 100% waste free. There are some breweries that do a really good job at like not wasting stuff and I, I hope to be like them one day when I get older, when I grow up as a brewer. Do you see it? if it was Kit's Park or something. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. We're going to try the beer. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. <coughs> okay, move this out to today. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. Before I get this all carbonated and try the first drink, I gotta make sure that this is all tightened up. Cause uh Good. You guys want to see it? Sure they do. Why not? Why not? Here it's physical go. bread, not liquid bread this time. Take a peek. Ooh, so pretty. You got to point the camera down. Oh, it wasn't at it? I there. can't see. Okay, there we go. I didn't want to have it open too long. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to get this fancy Stella Artois glass. I don't know if any of you guys know this. I'm not a big Stella fan. I will have a Stella every once in a while. It's like not my most favorite beer in the world, but it's not bad. But you can go and get their glasses, and sometimes you can get them for free uh, from bars, or you can um, pay, you know, maybe five, ten dollars for it. So it's not super crazy, and they're fun glasses. So there we go. Moment of truth. Okay. Hold on, I gotta do the camera now because um, he does not know how. Oh, he does not know how. Oh my goodness, this is so um, so amateur. Can you hold this for a second, please? And he does not know how. Alright, open. Okay, so that's open. Oh yeah, that's one thing. So let's let's just do this. I'm gonna pressurize it just enough. I just wanna see what you're doing. Well, I'm I'm pressurizing it. Let's see, they know what that looks like. Liquid came through the seal. Yeah. Seems like it's okay though. Alright, I want to get it to about 10 psi. And it's got to sit for several days. Or I can force, sorry, I can force uh, carbonate it by increasing. Hold on. I'm, why don't you put it back up here? Um, so I can force carbonate it by increasing the pressure um, to about 40. PSI, and then I just shake the crap out of the keg. Um, so, 
I might do that because I want to try this carbonated before I go to work. Oh, that's a little too much. Looks like a freaking nitro, though. Let's try this. Okay. Looks beautiful, though. That's not too bad. <laughs> that's so foamy. Crap. Looks pretty. We're gonna. It. It. So. So bad. This is good. This is so bad. This is good. <laughs> There's just so much pressure in there. It'll be. Yeah. Let me find a. So it won't be dry very easily. Yep. One day I'll get really good at this, so that when I do this live, I won't have any mistakes, and you'll be like, I remember when that guy was a total loser. He didn't even know what he was doing. Total amateur. Uh. Looks like he was having fun, but he was messing up like nobody's business. <laughs> and for the oh, that looks beautiful now. For those of you who do so do this, the at now? Uh, I put it down to zero. What? I think I just it was too pressurized. I, I don't know. I'm just figuring it out. So, anyways, I don't think there's actual CO two. This isn't going to be like super carbonated. I don't think because there hasn't had enough time to put CO two or let it dissolve into the the um, the uh, beer. It's hard to. It's hard to tell with too much air in it. So it's definitely not carbonated, but it's very. Hmm. 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 Okay. So here's my beer review of my own beer. Uh, it's not carbonated. Weird. Uh, should be carbonated here shortly, um, but you can see this is my IPA. It is super hoppy, and the flavors I've got. Um, it kind of has almost like a pineapple or citrus tang to it, and flavor as well, which is quite nice. It's quite impressive. Mm. But the hoppiness. This is probably one of my favorite IPAs that I've ever made. Mmm. It's, it's actually got a little bit of carbonation in it. That's weird. Okay. Let's see what what the wife says. So she, she won't take a whole lot because she's on this, like, she's cheating right now, but she's on this, like, no grain <laughs> diet. She's bringing grains in next week, so. It's smooth. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's. Oh yeah, there's a there's an aftertaste of coffee. Yeah. It's yeah. it's also kind of lukewarm. Yeah. Too, but, but I think that can bring the flavors out. It's a little bit um, rich, nutty. Not really nutty. That's it's a little word, sweet. But a little bit syrupy or yeah. sweet. Yeah, and so it's not like the bright crisp. Yeah, it's and it, I I think some of that is actually from the yeast itself. So it's the a yeast. Bit yeah, like so piney. That. That's the hops. Yeah, that's the Cascade uh -huh. hops. So yeah. I used Cascade hops on this, and um, magnum. and Magnum. That's right. Hmm. Hmm. That's good though. It's got a full full it's, body. It's very floral, mm -hmm. citrusy, floral, a little piney. There's a little bit of sweetness to it, and I think that comes from the. Um, I I had some crystal malt in it, and crystal malt kind of adds a little bit of. Uh, sweet caramel flavor to it, but um, that's pretty good. Mm. Wow, that's pretty good. Okay, so there's that. So that's done. Um, next, we're going to do the yeast starter. I'm going to put you on a brief pause. We're getting a storm outside, so that's kind of fun. So if the internet craps out on us, it probably means that um, we lost power. <laughs> I hope that tree doesn't fall down. Watch it fall down on the live stream. That'd be bananas. Okay. 
So, last thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna try and do this quickly, um, just because I actually know what I'm doing, so that helps. Pot. Okay. You're gonna need two cups of Wasser for a yeast starter. You might be wondering, why am I doing a yeast starter? I'll tell you why I'm doing a yeast starter. I do a yeast starter because with the yeast, if I double the amount that I get from the actual um, yeast packet, I'm gonna create a more efficient uh, fermentation and it's gonna be a quicker fermentation as well. Um, because the pack of yeast that I have has about 100 billion, sorry, 200 billion yeast cells and the when I'm done with the yeast starter, it's gonna be about 400 billion. It's gonna double completely. So we got some fun little things with all this. Wow, it's really raining. Yeah, it's pouring heavy. Great. Good, we needed this. All right, so here's the yeast that we're using for tomorrow. This is Imperial Yeast out of Portland, Oregon. And um, we're using the house A1, A01. So 200 a billion yeast cells. Um, I was using Y yeast for a long time, and I still really like Y yeast. I use it every once in a while. They usually have a smack pack, so they have the yeast in a little uh, plastic package, and then you just pop it, and then there's like beer that's on the inside, and it starts to eat that, and then you throw it in the, your beer bottle or your fermenter. So anyways, I'm pulling this out now just to um, get it warmed up. Also, I'm very much a clean freak. So what I do is I stick this whole thing in star sand. We used to have a pair of scissors. I don't know where it's at now. But anyways, we're gonna get two cups of water and we're gonna mix that in with that two cups of water, a half cup of DME. So DME stands for dry malt extract. Um, it's golden light DME. So basically what this is, is it's dehydrated beer minus the alcohol. So tomorrow when we do the all grain process, you're going to see what this looks like um, before it's dehydrated and turned into powder. So you can add this, this is basically pure sugar. You can add this to your beer um, once you're done brewing and actually increase um, the alcohol percentage and it's like one, uh, one percent of alcohol per pound. So for every pound you add in, one percent of alcohol. If you start off with a six percent beer, you add three pounds, you got a nine percent alcohol beer. But this is great for um, creating yeast starters as well. So a half cup of this, two cups of water. So let's start there. And honestly, I just eyeball it. But that's about two cups of water. I want to start heating up as quickly as possible so I don't have to make you guys wait. And while it's heating up, oops, that's not the right size. Wow, that is a good rain. That's amazing. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Uh, so while that's starting to heat up, um, I'll show you my other things. Because this makes me feel like a chemist. So, if you remember from high school or college, if you were cool and went to chemistry in college, you got to play with something like this. This is an Erlenmeyer flask. This is a 1,000 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Um, if you are interested in learning more about um, this equipment and where you can find it. Um, I have to track down the link again, but you can get this as well as the stir plate that I'm going to be using. Um, and I think it's about $45 for all of it. Um, and the stir plate's a lifetime warranty. And then this, this Erlen Maya flask is uh, really helpful because um, the one thing about using glass that is used for like chemistry experiments and everything, especially this one, is um, it can handle crazy temperature changes. So when we put the yeast in here, it's gonna be 
really hot. It's going to be boiling because we're going to boil it for 10 minutes. And then, um, and then we're going to cool it down as quickly as possible. So I'm just going to use a little bit of cold water to help cool it down. Um, and then I'm going to swirl it around. Once it's cooled down to where it's warm on the, on the hand, and that's about it, then we're going to add the yeast. We're going to add the stir pill in it, I guess. I'll have to show you that. And then we're going to get it going. And then we have it on the stir plate to add a little bit of oxygen to the uh, wort that we're creating um, so that the yeast has oxygen plus the sugar that we're adding. Um, and then that will multiply our yeast by two. So we'll have 400 billion cells. We'll add that 400 billion cells of yeast to our fermenter. It's great. Next, we have our stir plate. Looks like this. This is the pill I'm talking about. So it, it spins. Obviously, this will go inside of the, the actual Erlenmeyer flask. Um, here is our, our regulator. I don't know if you can see it. Golly, there it is right there. You can turn it on or off, and that'll speed up or slow the, this little tablet from moving around. Anyways, that's what we're going to be using tonight. Sometimes, depending on how um, active your yeast is, um, sometimes it's a good idea to uh, cover this thing with cellophane or something like that um, because sometimes your beer overflows and it blows out the top and it just pours over everything and I mean you got all sorts of nooks and crannies and it's a pain in the butt to clean so just a warning um, so there so anything that touches beer gets sanitized I'm very picky about everything we're going to cover the top with aluminum foil. But everything that could potentially touch the beer is going to be sanitized. It's just how we do it. And if you follow my instructions on that side of things, I might be an amateur at almost everything. But if you follow that, you shouldn't have bad beer. Now, if you're picking up a whole bunch of beer uh, brewing equipment that has been used by people for years and years and years, I'd recommend that you buying yourself a brand new fermenter unless it's glass. Uh, if it's plastic, get a new fermenter. Uh, the stuff that I got, it worked once or twice, and then that's when I had a bad beer experience because either I didn't clean well or I used some really hard, um, you know, scratchy sponge or something like that to um, kind of clean the gunk off, which you never do on plastic, but I did. And I probably just created some scratches which had bacteria grow in there and then the rest is history. So bad beer. So half a cup. Um. Oh, who's that? Bug Kitten. Woo! Thanks. Thanks for following me. Uh, I really hope this is, I'm sorry if it's super boring. I'm not like Emerald or what's that guy? from uh, Hell's Kitchen. I should know that guy's name, I don't, but um, I should. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for following me. Uh, tomorrow's gonna be fun. If you want to check it out, um, we're actually gonna be brewing the beer tomorrow. So anyways, if you have any questions about any of this, I'm doing this just like off the cuff, so I have a tendency to miss things. So please ask questions, I'd be happy to answer it. But thanks for following Big Kitten, I really appreciate it. You're awesome, whoever you are. But here we go. We're gonna get some DME going. Um, I'm gonna do this. I don't have a half cup, so we're gonna eyeball it. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Why could it be bad? Because it's gonna blow over the top of our Erlenmeyer flask and it makes a huge mess. So, because I'm expecting that, because I'm eyeballing this, which is what you don't do in, <laughs> in chemistry. Um, I'm going to take the precaution. Okay, we're going to take, I'm going to, yeah, it's really come down. Um, I'm giving away to the wife. She's making the sourdough bread, which Bug Kitten, if you've been watching, you got a chance to see it, and it's coming out of the oven. Right there. Oh, man, it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. My wife does kombucha, and she does sourdough, so we're basically like the fermenting couple. Um, we do everything fermentation, which is great, and I would love to try my hand at some kombucha at some point in time if she'll be willing to teach me, so maybe she can do that yeah. on a live stream at some point in time, um, and then we'll talk about 
sourdough, I don't know, all the stuff. But for me, I'm just the drinks. Coffee, beer, cider, wine. And then I have to do kombucha because that's a, you know, alcoholic. that's an alcoholic. Well, low alcohol. I recommend, if you're going to be dealing with anything hot, make sure you use your bare hands. Ah, ah. Also, this is pure sugar, so, I don't know if you can see it. it, it's so powdery, it's not even, it's like powdered sugar, that's the consistency of it. When you're dealing with hot water, the steam from the hot water will collect on it and cause it to solidify a little bit. Um, so you just gotta be ready for that. So I say pour quickly when you do pour it in the water. I wanna boil it, and the reason we're boiling it is because we're just trying to get any potential bacteria in the water or anything. We're just killing stuff. That's all we're doing is sterilizing and sanitizing um, and making it ready for the yeast. Again, we're gonna cool it down. Yeast will be happy. So. Um, I'm gonna have 10 minutes while we let this thing boil, so Bug Kitten, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to just send a message and say hi, and then we can just, I'll answer any of your questions, because I'll have a full 10 minutes to be thinking about whatever uh, your question is, so. But thanks again for calling, you just made my day. All right, so it's boiling. I don't know if I can bring this over, but let's just. I want to show you what I'm doing because that's what you do in a cooking show. So I poured it in. You can see how it's kind of collected over here. Um, and we're going to stir it. We want to make sure that it doesn't burn at the bottom. One thing to watch out for when you're dealing with um, sugary contents like this wort here. So it's wort, W-O-R-T. It's not pronounced wort, but wort. Um, that's what we're creating here. But you can see that it's, yeah, you can turn it down a little bit. So you can blow on it, and you can turn the gas down. If you have electricity, um, you, you need to turn it down sooner rather than later. Uh, reason being, electricity takes forever to turn off. It's not like 100% on, 100% off like gas. When you're brewing beer, honestly, gas is best. So, I know, it's super stormy out. All right, so we're gonna let this boil for 10 minutes. Um, I'm gonna use my phone. And then we'll get a chance to show you what's, what happens next. And honestly, I do this with every brew. Um, I've only done it once where I didn't have a yeast starter and I regret it completely because um, I don't know, it just, it, it kind of made things feel different, you know, it felt like something was missing. Um, I'm definitely a creature of habit. If I'm going to be um, doing something, you know, I want to do it the same thing, the same way over and over again. So we're going to let that go. We got another viewer, which is awesome. So sorry for the, the bad camera. I definitely can put myself under IRL chatting now um, since we're not doing the cooking yet. We're just waiting. Um, but now's a great chance for any questions or answers while I drink my beer. So, oh my gosh. Okay, so this beer, this IPA that I made, I named it Magnum PA. If for any of you guys who know about, um, who know about uh, Magnum PI, which is Personal Investigator. It was a show back in like the 70s, 80s, <clears throat> and uh, it was great. So I tried to do that. Uh, it was just a play on words, really, was what it, uh, blah, 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 is what it was. Um, so I used Magnum Hops, which is where the Magnum comes from, and then uh, PA for Pale Ale. And then what I was shooting for is since the show takes place in an exotic uh, atmosphere, sorry, I... It's all backwards on the camera. <laughs> Anyways, um, I was trying to shoot for something that was citrusy and exotic. So that's what we're doing. This is the Magnum PA. Oh, yeah. One of the things I wanted to show you guys. So bear with me because I'm a total noob at Twitch and with all this stuff. I'm going to show you a couple things. One, 
I'm gonna show you my recipe for Magnum PA if you're interested. If you're a brewer and you do um, all grain beers, then you can look at this recipe. If you don't brew beer yet, still take a picture of the recipe um, because it's worked out um, really well. So I wanna show you. So I'm gonna screenshot, um, screen share, sorry, so you can see and I'll take you to um, the website. Actually, while I'm doing that, before I do that, I should probably get it ready to go, huh? That way you don't read all my emails, <laughs> which I don't really care because I'm not that cool of a person for people to want to steal my stuff anyways. <clears throat> all right. Let's see. Version three. Okay. Here we go. Coming back to you. Coming back to you. Here we go. Screen share. Boop, 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 boop. Millions of me because you can't get enough of me already. So check this out. So this is what we're looking at. Magnum Pale Ale. This is version three. I've done uh, another version before. The last version I did, I actually turned into a uh, competition and it turned out really well. But you can see uh, here, these are the fermentables. So all of the malt that I used, I used 10 pounds of Maris Otter. That's a British malt. Uh, 1.5 Victory Malt, one pound Vienna Malt, and then 0.5 Wheat Malt. The Wheat Malt the whole purpose of the wheat malt is to give head retention. And if you were watching when we were uh, pouring the first beer, um, you got a chance to see how much foam was coming out. Um, and so there's still a little bit of bubble on it, which obviously that's the wheat that's doing that. It, cre it allows the, the head to stay for a little bit longer. Uh, the, uh, the Victory Malt and Vienna Malt kind of give it that ambery color, um, but it's still on the lighter side of things. so. Uh, we keep that golden looking color and then um, the victory malt um, so Vienna malt is more for adding to body and giving it more of a biscuity flavor same with Maris Otter uh, Maris Otter is just the base malt so that's where most of our sugar comes from and then the victory malt kind of adds a sweet caramely flavor which normally you don't find in an IPA um, but I honestly feel like it adds um, some depth and complexity to the beer when you have citrusy notes as well as um, the hot bitterness. Um, because, you know, obviously fruit is sweet. So, um, and then going down, we have Magnum hops. Um, so I did one ounce of Magnum hop at about 60 minutes. And so when it says at 60 minutes, that means as soon as the beer is boiling, which again, tomorrow, if you're, if you're uh, watching the stream, uh, you'll get a chance to see that. But as soon as the, bo the beer starts boiling, I throw the hops in. Um, and then it stays in that whole time. Uh, the second uh, edition of hops, uh, that was more for aromatics, or sorry, flavoring. It was for flavoring, so 15 minutes. And this is Mistral hops, and it, there's the citrus fruits, the floral, the sweet, that kind of thing. So again, do you see that I have spicy and fruity aroma, citrus fruits, floral, and sweet fruits. That's what I'm shooting for. That's where the exotic stuff comes from. And then the talus hops, which is citrus, flowers, wood, Grapefruit, stone fruit, oak, coconut, and pine. So we said pine. Um, hops have a tendency to bring out the pininess of most beers, and that's probably also from um, Magnum Hop as well. But yeah, this is just a it's just a fantastic beer. It's actually really, really pleasant. And then here's the yeast I use. I use citrus. Uh, citrus cranks out the orange and lemon aromas along with some tropical fruit. Uh, use a strain at high temperatures for big ester production. Um, and anyways, I'll have to figure out some of those words for you guys, but here we go. So this is what I was using today for, uh, figuring out how much CO2 to put in the keg. Honestly, I think I filled it up a little too much because it was already pushing beer out, um, uh, really quickly. And honestly, they say that you want to cool down the beer in the keg. Um, and that helps to reduce the amount of foam that comes out. So, I need to go stick it in the fridge and let it sit there for a while before I actually pump out a beer, or not pump it out, gosh, pull it out of the tap into a glass for the first time, but I couldn't help it. I had to do my angel share. This is a tradition, so I don't know if you heard that, but we have a big freaking storm going over us right now. It's amazing. Anyways, so on the left side, you'll see temperature um, in Fahrenheit. So if you're overseas, you're going to have to do the old American way, which is Fahrenheit, because it's better. No, 
I'm joking, joking, joking. I use Celsius at work, so it's actually better. Um, so I'm gonna try and get it to about 45 degrees Fahrenheit, if not lower, in the refrigerator. And I need to add about 2.0 volumes of CO2. Okay, you're hearing this come from somebody who sucked so badly at chemistry that the teacher had to give me extra credit to pass, or at least get a C minus, you know, C's get degrees. So there's that. So don't get too overwhelmed by this because you're talking to somebody who sucks so bad at, at uh, um, chemistry and yet I still can make it happen. But what it's saying is nine. So it says nine PSI is what we need to add to the keg. I'd put in 10, so we'll set it to nine. I might amp it up a little bit to see if I can actually, um, here we go. Um, amp it up a little bit just to see if I can uh, carbonate it a little bit faster so I can enjoy it uh, before I go to work. Um, but if not, it's not that big of a deal. This beer, I destined it to be um, released at a block party. So anyways, we're having a block party in my neighborhood uh, next week on Friday and we're gonna have the big reveal of the beer. So um, hopefully people like IPAs. I'll have some backups just in case. So, I think we have five minutes to go before uh, that DME is ready, and then I'm just going to show you everything else. Uh, honestly, um, what we have left, it's going to take maybe, I'm going to say another 15 minutes, and then the stream will be done. Um, I'm trying to get things organized in terms of my layout for all the streams, so it's not boring, you guys. Um, and again, I really hope that people do end up starting to use the chat more often because I really want to have it be more interactive with you guys because um, you probably don't want to hear me just blah, 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 blah. You know, I can if you want me to, but um, anyways. And uh, if somebody is watching right now, can you just send me a message because I want to make sure that I fixed it because I think um, what I did was I let it s so that anybody who has an account that has um, a verified email can chat. And it doesn't need a verified phone number or anything like that just because I don't like to have my phone number on things. Um, but give it a shot. I also have it set up so it only lasts for about five seconds. I don't know whether that's good or bad, but we'll see. So hopefully I catch it. Um, anyways, there's that. So um, does anybody have any questions? Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I love IPAs. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. That's good. Again, if the beer is good and it's not even carbonated and it's not even cold, it's a freaking good beer, in my opinion. Um, so there's that. Um, okay. So. Oh, there's a timer. It wasn't even five minutes. All right, let's go. Come with me. And you'll see a world... Of imagination. Okay, I don't even know the song, so I'm not even going to try it. All right, here we go. So you can see it's been boiling. We got that nice golden color. Again, the DME that I used, DME stands for dry malt extract, okay? When we brew the beer tomorrow, you'll get a chance to see um, what I'm talking about. I'll explain everything that I'm doing so that if you, too, want to brew a beer, you can. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible because... Being able to brew your own beer is amazing, especially when it's as good as you can get at a brewery and you have five gallons of it at home. <laughs> so good. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to get the Erlenmeyer flask out, turn that off, make sure to handle all hot things with your bare hands. I know, you guys are, you better be rolling eyes. Uh, you better be rolling eyes. Otherwise, I'd be sad. Okay. You know what? I have a hard time with doing all of this at once, so. Yeah, I don't have my second bare hand available, so we're gonna use this. Um, uh, okay, I'm gonna pour it in gently. I don't want it to go on either side. I can't believe I'm doing this without the sink. Scary. I'm trying not to let it touch the neck because uh, when I pour the yeast in, if the yeast happens to touch the heated part of the Erlenmeyer flask, the yeast will actually die, and we don't want that. Again, I had this in star sand, so if you've been watching this whole stream, um, or you watched it until about now, 
you're gonna know that there's foam, right? And what did I say about foam? Especially if it's been uh, star sand, foam is good. Foam is your friend. So um, I'm gonna just bring you around with me. Just come join me on this adventure. Yes. Okay, so I'll just sit this down for a second because I need to grab the other bare hand. I didn't plan very well. Normally, hot. Normally what I do is I have a bucket of cold water. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run it under cold water. We don't need that much. But we're just gonna run it under cold water. You're gonna see me swirling it around. Um, this does add oxygen to it, and that's okay. Sorry, I don't need that. This does add a little bit of oxygen to it, but that's okay, because remember, this, the yeast needs sugar and oxygen in order for it to produce CO2, and of course, the most important ingredient, alcohol. We're gonna cool it down, it takes about five minutes, and then we're gonna add the yeast. Actually, where did I put that? thing. The great thing is the star sand that we created for today will be the star sand we use for tomorrow. Again, you want to try and use your resources sparingly. Um, it helps to be more sustainable. Um, I'm hoping that during the lifetime of this live stream, as you'll get a chance to see my awesome garage turn into a total man cave slash lounge slash bar slash brew space, um, but I also want to turn this into an actual brewery, and I want you guys to join me on this journey, uh, starting from this silliness to, you know, in a kitchen, which is great, it's a fun part of the, the journey, uh, all the way up to brewery, because it would just be great, and then, you know, one day if you're traveling around, wherever I'm at, you guys can come visit, and you can try the beers that you watched get created on live stream, which is even better, so one of the things I was thinking about is I've got a bunch of beers that I'm wanting to do. Um, I have a handful already on the docket that I'm gonna to, to brew on live stream. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna get you guys involved as well. So what I was thinking of doing is if you are a follower of mine and you happen to get one more person to follow me, then I'm gonna have you, um, we'll just do like a video call or something like that and we'll actually create a beer recipe together. Um, and then we'll brew it, and then you get to name the beer. And it'll be a total shout out to you on um, Twitch, which is awesome. I love Twitch. I, this, is, this is actually such a fun tool. So again, if you ever see this part of the, st the stream, and you're a follower of mine, and you get one more person to follow me, um, you and I will create a beer, and you'll get to name it. And, uh, and then I'll brew it on live stream and um, give you a shout out as well. So I want this to be interactive. I want to include people because all of this stuff that I do, I've learned very quickly that my entire life is about other people right now. And so um, I just want to involve people in that, in that process, in this life, because without people, it's really not worth it. So there's my other philosophical idea. One of these days, I'm going to start doing a whole bunch of stuff with this beer that's going to be good for people. All right, so the top of the Erlenmeyer flask is still a little warm. Um, I could touch it, so it's probably not going to kill the yeast. Um, but everything down here is just cold enough for what we need. Um, I'm going to steal these scissors. Okay, scissors are going to be touching the, um, the yeast bag. And just because it could potentially touch the beer, these are getting sanitized. You're done with the scissors, right? Okay, I have to ask the wife. <laughs> I almost made a mistake. All right, here we go. So uh, the yeast is heated up a little bit because of the, um, the star sand. Do a little bit of a cut in it. Pop this open, I mixed it up so you can see that I mixed everything up so it's kind of cloudy. That's just the yeast that's left over. And I'm just gonna pour it in Hopefully you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. Pour it in carefully so it doesn't touch the neck just in case it gets too hot. All right, cool. So that is that. Now we got... Oh, 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 oh. 
Oh, that was close. Okay, so now you can see it's nice. It's it's a very cloudy color. I'm gonna get the um, wherever that thing is. This pill, <clears throat> this thing, the stirrer. Stick it in there. Okay, I'm gonna move you real quick so you can see what's going on. Because I don't know about you, but I always like to see what's going on. This is the great thing. It's like live TV, uncensored. You get to see all the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, maybe one day I'll have it a little bit more streamlined. But it is not this day. I'll tell you what. Okay. Gotta move my crap around. All right. Here we go. So I got my stir plate. And in the stir plate is a magnet that's gonna attach to the magnet pill thingy McBob. See, you can tell I'm not a chemist because I don't even know what the frick that thing's called. Oh, come on, come on, get in there. What the same? And yes, I am putting it in the right way, don't worry. Don't you worry yourself. Why is it not working? Sometimes I don't understand outlets. Because guess what? I'm not an electrician either. <laughs> okay, there we go. So the whole point is to get this onto the platform and get the pill right in the center. Oh, okay, cool. It's right there, pretty darn close. <clears throat> Remember, I said that I did not um, measure appropriately. And if I don't measure appropriately, it could mean that it's gonna be explosive. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get some saran wrap and some aluminum for you British folk. Aluminum if you're American, because you know, it's just it sounds cooler. Aluminum, aluminum, I don't know. I don't know. You you decide. You decide. But anyways, I'm just gonna cover this up because uh, I've experienced a mess and it's a pain in the ass to deal with that. So I could go ahead and turn this on and I will try and See, is it right in the center? We're about to find out. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Look at that. So I don't want it to be that deep of a spinning. I'm going to fix that because it's a little off center. I'm sorry if I'm making you sick. do all right I can feel it spinning gosh I totally messed it up okay so like I said the hardest part about doing the live stream thing especially when you're an amateur at everything is mistakes happen especially on live but you know what if you're new and you're trying to stream yourself you know what just know that there's somebody like me who doesn't know what the frick they're doing and they're just here we're gonna turn it off golly Okay, let's try. Let's see if that worked. I think it did. I think it worked. I hear it spinning. Oh, yeah, perfect. I don't know if you could see it, but it's right in the middle. Right on. Right on. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is aluminum foil. And because it could potentially touch beer, what do we do? You're right, if you didn't answer that yet, um, we're gonna get it in star sand. So I'm just gonna dip it in real fast. I just make sure that the whole thing is wet with star sand. You know what, sometimes science is messy and it's okay. We're gonna create a seal over the top and a little bit of air we'll be able to get out. And then um, 
yeah, you'll get a chance to see this a little bit later. Tomorrow, um, it'll be done fermenting because it's just a small amount of beer. Um, right now, it's not fermenting. It's just kind of going through what they call the lag phase. And then there's the exponential phase when it's actually fermenting and going to town. And then this whole thing is going to fill up with bubbles. And um, that's just showing you the CO2 and the alcohol creation. And then it goes to, I can't remember the last phase, but basically it just starts settling out. And um, that's when it's going to start falling to the bottom. And um, this will be ready to go um, tomorrow during brew day. Brew day is going to start for us at about 1030 Mountain Time, which is my time. So do the math wherever you might be. And then um, we're going to be done around 2.30 Mountain Time. It's about a four-hour process, so feel free to jump in and out. It's not that big of a deal that you're there the whole time. Uh, there's a lot going on, and there's a lot of sitting as well. So um, anyways, we'll, we'll talk about all that. But then this will be ready to go tomorrow when the beer is done. So anyways, that is all I've got for you. Thanks for joining me and watching this uh, stream as we kegged my first beer and had a massive blow up. We also did a yeast starter. So now you know why you do a yeast starter, to multiply the yeast so that you have a more efficient and uh, quick ferment, which is great, um, which means you get to have your beer faster, which is always good. And um, <clears throat> tomorrow we're doing brew day. So as I always say, the adventurous stay thirsty, speak easy. Thanks for joining me today. I will see you all mañana.